Okay, so as we talked about the other day, you cannot take the derivative of a product by taking the derivative of the first one, taking the derivative of the second one and multiplying them together. You need a special rule. So we get what's called the product rule and the quotient rule. This higher order derivative stuff sounds scary. It's, it's nothing to worry about. The product rule and quotient rule is what we're gonna have to worry about because this is gonna cause some problems. Okay, so let's start with a little practice. Go ahead, find the derivative of f of x. Hannah? Yeah? Are, are you lying to me? No, my dog has ACL surgery. That could be the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life. So your dog had ACL surgery and you had to help him down the stairs? Yeah, because he needed to eat. <laughs> and he can't make it down the stairs on his own. Because he had ACL surgery. Yeah. Okay. The worst part of it is, too, is he's 14. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you don't need to answer the following question. I'm just going to throw this out there, though. I'm guessing that surgery probably cost at least $1,000. No, actually, it was around 500 Oh. <laughs> it's not like you're going to take him out back and shoot him. No. <laughs> right. Even though he's 14. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just checking. Yanni, you get the easy one. What's a derivative of the first term? What's a derivative of that? Uh, 20x cubed. Thank you very much. Moving on. Bella, what's a derivative of the second term? Um, positive 18x to the negative 7. Well done. And last but not least, Daniel, what's a derivative of the last term? Did you try rewriting that term? It'd be 12x to the one half. You got it. Rewrite, rewrite. Yep, okay, so now what's the derivative of that? It'd be 6x. To the? Um, one third? Nope. Uh, John, what's the exponent there? Negative one half. Good. One half minus one, negative one half. Okay. And we can leave it like that. Or again, eventually you're going to have to be able to do this. Okay. Good. So uh, certain instances, like the last term there, it's going to be worth your time to rewrite that so that it's a little bit easier to take the derivative of. Okay, so there we go. And th that function f of x is a sum or a difference of terms. And therefore, like we used, learned in the power rule, it's just a derivative of each individual term. That doesn't apply when we start multiplying them or dividing them, which, which is what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna talk about the product rule. We're gonna talk about the quotient rule. We're gonna talk about the other four derivatives of the trig functions. We've done sine and cosine, then obviously we need uh, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. Higher order derivatives is real simple. It sounds fancy, it just means what's a second derivative, what's a third derivative, what's a fourth derivative. Okay. Not that difficult. And then you should always eat more vegetables. Okay, good. All right, the product rule. So here's the scenario. We would like to take the derivative of this. You can, however, do that right now. So please do that. Take the derivative of that function. A 
I'll give you a hint. You need to be a little sneaky. Aaron, I know you're not done yet, but what have you started doing? Can't you find the derivative of either one, like of both of them and multiply them? No. Okay, that was perfect. Thank you very much. That's exactly what I wanted someone to do. I knew I called on the right person. Okay, Be and you'll see why. Aaron, um, don't stop doing that. Keep going. So finish that. Even though it's wrong, just finish it so we can compare. All right, Cindy, what are you doing? Same thing or different? I think the same thing. Same thing. Anybody not just taking the derivative of 3x minus 2x squared and taking the derivative of 5 plus 4x and then multiplying them together? Prasant, oh, what are you doing? Multiply them first. Oh, you multiply them first. Oh, that's different. Okay. So, Cindy, you're saying you took h of x and said it was 15x plus 12x squared minus 10x squared minus 8x cubed. You did that first? Yeah. Aaron, you did not do that, right? Okay, good, good, good. So Aaron, you keep going. Cindy, you keep going. If you didn't already finish it, uh, I'm just cleaning things up a little bit here. Okay, so this is still h of x. Be careful with your notation. Yes, you need to say h of x, because at some point when you take the derivative, you have to make it clear that this is the point where I'm taking the derivative. Okay, so, uh, Cindy, did I do my multiplication correctly? Do you agree with me? Uh, yeah, that's what I got. Awesome. So what'd you get for h prime, Cindy? Um, I got, I put the cubed in front. So no problem, I put, that's uh, fine. negative 24x squared. Uh-huh. And then plus 4x. Uh-huh. And then I wasn't sure about the plus 15x if that one got like rid of. No, constants disappear, they go to zero. What happens to a, uh, a variable? So let's talk about this. This is a common uh, difficulty which, with people. Because there's no exponent, there's a one there, people get confused. If I was to graph 15x, what would it look like? And it's a line, right. So the derivative of a line is just the tan, or sorry, is just the slope of that line, so we would just get plus 15. Okay. Aaron, did you finish your method? Yeah. And you got something different, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I wanted to use that as a point to illustrate it, that we cannot take the derivative of that and the derivative of that and multiply it together. However, almost every one of you at some point is going to do that. Aaron, you just got out of your system early, so you're good to go from this point on. Okay. So in a case like this, we don't necessarily need this product rule that I'm going to show you on the next slide. You can multiply this out. However, as the problems get nastier, or if the functions are nastier, this is going to be too much of a hassle. So imagine instead of two binomials multiplied together, we had a trinomial and a quadnomial. Now you've got terms flying everywhere, a whole bunch of work where we can just use the product rule. Okay, so what is the product rule? It is the following. Yeah, we did, okay, hold on. I did, yeah, okay, okay. All right, so the product rule. Product rule works like this. We have two terms here, this first term, and this second term. And so for discussion purposes, we're gonna call this f of x and we'll call this g of x. Okay, two functions multiplied together. The product rule says the following. In order to find the derivative of a product, you take the derivative of the first term and multiply it by the second term. So you don't change the second term at all. Plus, the first term 
whoops, the first term times the derivative of the second term. For discussion purposes, that is the following. f prime of x times g of x plus g prime of x times f of x. Now, I would argue that this doesn't necessarily make my life any easier because notice I still have to multiply this out. By this, I mean this guy. I still have to multiply that out. I still have to multiply that out. I still have to combine like terms. I still have to simplify it. But what I'll end up with is the same answer. Okay. Personally, in this problem, I would have used the technique that we used on the last slide. However, we are, like I said, we are going to start using the product rule for more complicated functions. Okay, so here's the fancy uh, blue rectangle. The derivative of a product is the, uh, here it is in English. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now in the last slide I may have said it backwards, but it doesn't matter because it's a plus sign. So if you take this and this and switch them, you still get the same thing. Doesn't matter what order you're going. And there's some subtlety in that box that we should mention. Like for instance, the functions have to be differentiable. If they're not differentiable, then this doesn't work. But you're seldom if ever going to see a function that's non-differentiable in a product rule. Okay. Are we good? You got this? All right. Try it here. All right, I got 23, let's go. Uh, let's see, Josie, what do you got? For the derivative? Yeah, you wanna give me a final answer or you wanna take me through it? Um, I can do either. Let's go step by step, go ahead. Okay, I, didn't, I multiplied them together first. So you cheated. Yeah, I was oh. really confused on how to use the product rule. Okay, so then let's do this. Give me your final answer, and we'll use that as a check. Okay, I got 4x to the third plus 9x squared plus 14x plus 21. Okay, so we'll, we'll do it using the product rule, and then we'll check to see how you did. Um... I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. JT, do you use product rule? No, I did the same way because I was confused. Holy guacamole. Um, Chaywan, product rule? No? Anybody product rule? Damien. Oh. Hold on, I gotta, I'll got. i pick on Damien. Damien, my man, talk me through it. What do we got? All right, for, so... To find the derivative of g of x, I first did the derivative of f of x. Okay. Uh, which I got to be 3x squared plus 7. Uh huh. And that would be multiplied by uh, g of x, or oh, just the regular, so it'd be x plus 3, multiplied by x plus 3. Good. Okay, so hold on, let me interrupt for a second. So, derivative of the first. Okay, we're going to call this the first, we're going to call this the second. Okay, derivative of the first times the second plus, go. Derivative of the second, so that'd be three. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the derivative of this? Oh, sorry, one. One, sorry. yeah, yeah, I knew I knew that's what you meant. Okay. Yeah, 
and then multiply it by x cubed plus seven x. Your setup is perfect. Well done. Other than that little three mishap, which we'll let go. Okay, then I got to clean this up. Three x to the third power uh, plus seven x plus nine x squared plus twenty one plus x cubed plus seven x. I think I did my math correctly there. Uh, 4x cubed plus 9 x squared plus 14x plus 21. Ooh, same, same. So here's the big question. Which one's better? Rule more. Okay, why? Because I feel like if you were to multiply everything out and then take the derivative, you can like easily, like at least for me with all okay. those numbers, I'm gonna get messed up. But with this, as long as you know how to set it up, I feel like it's much easier because you're just taking the derivative of like a smaller part than what you normally would. Love it. Um, I'm guessing that if I were to ask you, the ones that multiplied it out, I, I would guess you would argue for multiplying it out because it's not something new and scary like the product rule. You're familiar with multiplying out two binomials. You're familiar with taking a simple derivative using a power rule. So this is, this is new and scary, and we don't want to do that. So the answer to my question is neither one is better. Neither one is worse. It's all a personal preference. However, Eventually, we're going to get to a point where you're going to have to use the product rule. It's just, it's the nature of the beast. Until we cross that bridge, you can stay with the multiplying out technique. Again, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, questions on this? We're good? Wait, uh, one Waiting. question. Certainly. If there's like, if you have to like multiply out three different like, I don't know, like groups of parentheses, would you do the same thing? Just like uh, find the derivative Ooh. of one of each one and oh. then add them all together. So if I'm understanding your question correctly, Max, and you just opened up a whole new can of worms, buddy boy, you're asking, what if I have 3x plus 4 times 2x squared minus 7 times x minus 5? Yeah, exactly. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to answer your question. Oh, thanks. Okay. So one way to do it is you could multiply that beast out, right? And we'd end up with a quartic, I think. You're wondering how we do it calculus-wise. And the reason I'm not answering your question is because there's some homework problems that explore that exact idea. So we'll talk a little bit about this after you've gotten in and got your hands dirty. Okay? Anybody else? Let's talk about that pesky quotient rule then. There it is. This one is nasty. And what happens is, eventually, you're going to have enough knowledge that you can turn just about any quotient rule into a product rule. Most people opt to do that. I'm not telling you to do that. And at this stage, you can't do that. Uh, there it is in English, by the way. And that's scary. I'm gonna take you through the example and talk out loud as I'm working it through so that you can understand how I'm approaching this instead of just, well, it kind of is memorizing, but I'll show you how I do it in a second once, I, once you get it copied down. And again, the thing to remember is it is not equal to f prime of x over g prime of x even though at some point in time you're going to do that. Everybody does it. It's not right, but it is a common mistake. Whoops.
If you're ready to go, give me an emoji thumbs up, please. Okay. I don't want to go too fast and people don't get the, the theorem copy down. Looks like we got everybody. I can always come back to it in a second. So if you, if you don't have it yet, it's not the end of the world. All right, let's do this problem. Now, uh, what I talked about in, in before is at, at some point you could rewrite this. Ooh, that's a horrible five. Well, you know it's a five. You could rewrite it this way. However, at this stage in the game, you don't know how to take the derivative of that. So we can't do it. Unlike the product rule where we have an option, in this case, we have to do it using the quotient rule. Okay, so y prime. I start with the big gazinta bar. Throw that up there because it's gonna get ugly. This one you have to be very careful because with the product rule, remember it's a plus sign, so you can go in either order. This is a minus sign, which is different. So first things first, I take the denominator, put it on the bottom and square it. Very seldomly will you multiply out the denominator. Just leave it. Okay. Denominator on the bottom squared. Bring the denominator up to the top and leave it alone. Multiply that by the derivative of the numerator. Minus. I like a big honking bracket because it's important. Switch what we already did in the first half. So take the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Okay, so let me talk you through that again. Denominator on the bottom squared. Bring the denominator up to the top, leave it alone. Multiply it by the denominator, sorry, the derivative of the numerator. Minus the reverse of what we did up here. So the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Then hilarity ensues. 5x squared plus 5 minus 10x squared plus 4x all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. And you're going to want to multiply out that denominator sometime. Don't. Leave it alone. Negative 5x squared plus 4x plus 5 all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Done. Now, could I factor the numerator? Maybe. That might factor. Then again, maybe not. At this stage, I don't care. This is what I'm most concerned about. We'll get a ton of practice with simplifying these monsters. For now, it's just understanding the basics of how to plug and chug. Denominator on the bottom squared. Bring the denominator up to the top, leave it alone. Multiply by the derivative of the numerator minus big honk in bracket, the derivative, or sorry, the uh, numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Okay. Let's talk about common mistakes. Common mistake number one, people get these two terms reversed. And you can't reverse it because it's a minus sign. You all know that 2 minus 1 is not the same thing as 1 minus 2. Second thing, a lot of people turn that minus sign into a plus sign. Third thing, people forget the brackets, which means they're not going to distribute this minus sign to each of the terms. Wow, that is a mess, but you get the idea. Okay, so don't make any of those mistakes. Let me rephrase that. Try not to make any of those mistakes. Okay, is your brain ready to melt yet? No? All right. You do this one.
All right, Amanda, your turn. Talk me through it. Um, okay, so for the first, you start with 3x squared minus 2x and then square it in the denominator. Okay, 3x squared minus 2x quantity squared in the denominator. Bring the denominator to the bottom squared. Go. And then you put um, 3x squared minus 2x. Good. Okay. And then multiply. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Zero. Yeah. Where'd that zero come from? The derivative of nine. Oh, just checking. Okay, good job. You couldn't fool me. Okay. Um, uh, then uh, subtract nine times six x minus two. Do you agree? The rest of you? Yes? Yay. Okay. That's what I'm most concerned about. Let's take it a little bit further and simplify that bad boy. Oh, well look, this disappears because that's multiplied by zero. So I get negative 54x plus 18 over 3x squared minus 2x quantity squared. Uh, does 18 go into, what goes into 18 and 54? There's a common denominator, or co common factor in the top, isn't there? At least, let's see, 2, 2, 18, 18 times 4, no, 18 times 3. 18 times 3 is 18. 18 times 3. Okay, so we could do a uh, factor out of negative 3 and do, oh no, sorry, I lied. Factor out of negative 18 and do 3x minus 1. Now, the only reason I did that last step is I wanted to see if anything would cancel. It doesn't, so it was kind of a waste of time. I could have just stopped here. Good. Notice it doesn't necessarily simplify it. That derivative is not a pretty function. It's ugly. But it gets us where we need to go. Okay, this is f prime of x. It, it allows us to take the derivative of that function. And then we can do all the things we've done already. We could find the slope of a tangent line. We could use this for velocity, all that other fun stuff. Okay? What happens if it does can't, if like you simplify it and something does cancel out, but... Um we don't do it, would it be wrong, for example, if it, was a, if it was a question? That is a great question. And what you'll have to do is read the, read the problems uh, or read the instructions on problems because sometimes I will say, uh, find the derivative of, like this, find the derivative of f of x. In this, in, if this were a, a quiz problem, for instance, you could stop right here. However, if it says find the derivative of f of x, and simplify, then you're going to need to take it as simplified as possible. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, good. And if you're not sure, ask. Okay, so when you start doing these problems on the homework, number one, you're going to have to be able to recognize, should I do a product rule, should I do a quotient rule? And initially, you're going to have the product rule and the quotient rule sitting right next to you, and you're going to be following that pattern. Eventually, the goal is to be able to do this without the rule right in front of you. And that will happen naturally because you're going to do this so much. Okay, any questions on the quotient rule? Outstanding. We don't need to do that. Because that's what we get for an answer. Okay, let's talk about the trig functions. There are four others we need to talk about. Tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. I'm going to show you how to do one of them. If you want to write this down, you can. It's just a derivative of a derivative, which seems kind of silly, but it's where the derivative of the tangent comes from. And now that we've talked about the product and quotient rule, you can pretty much figure out what I'm going to do. I'm going to find the derivative of the tangent by converting it into sine over cosine. And now that we have the quotient rule, I can find the derivative of sine over cosine by using the quotient rule. 
Okay. So I get that mess. Now, what does this mean? Well, I took the cosine to the bottom and squared it. That's fine. Bring the cosine up to the top. Take the derivative of the numerator. I haven't done that yet. I've just written it. Minus, big honk in parentheses, the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Then I simplify. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Ooh. So let me write that down again. This is cosine. Whoops. This is cosine x. This is going to be negative sine x. And hopefully you see what happens here. I can click, but I'm going to write it anyways because it's cooler that way. All right, let's stop here for a second. Here's the first of many of my pet peeves. This is silly. Do not do that again. Okay. Do you all understand why those can't cancel? Okay. You're going to anyways, but don't do that. How should you do it? Well, what's cosine squared plus sine squared? One. One. So this actually because I don't know what just happened there. That was weird. This becomes 1 over cosine squared x. What's 1 over cosine x also known as? Uh, uh, not cosecant. No, nope. uh, the other one. Secant. There you go. So after going through that big elaborate thing, we end up with the derivative. Uh, let me get rid of this mess here. Let me get rid of my work so you can see it. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. That's where it comes from. Okay, so why did I do all this? Well, I realize that some of you have succeeded as memorizers and you're just going to memorize this chart. That's okay. However, if you are not a memorizer and you want to understand where each of these things come from, or you're in the middle of the AP test and you have a brain fart and you can't remember what the derivative of secant is, you now know how to find the derivative of secant. Write the secant as 1 over cosine, use the quotient rule, you get secant tangent. Same is true for cotangent, same is true for cosecant. Or sorry, yeah, for cosecant. Each one of those is found the same way, which is also why we didn't do this when we did the sine and cosine because we needed the quotient rule. Okay, so that's all six trig functions. Now you can find the derivative of each of those trig functions. Notice, sine, secant, and tangent are all positive. The co-functions, cosine, cosecant, cotangent, are all negative. That might help you remember where the minus signs go. Should I say that again, or did you get it? Say it again. Okay, the functions sine, tangent, and secant are all positive values. The co-functions, cosine, cotangent, cosecant, are negative. That's gonna be your biggest challenge. It's not memorizing what the derivative is, but which ones have minus signs in them. And if you're good at pattern recognition, you also realize tangent is secant squared, cotangent is cosecant squared with a minus sign because it's co-function. Secant is secant tangent, cosecant is cosecant cotangent with a minus sign because it's co-function. Okay, whatever works for you. Preguntas? No? Bien. Higher order derivatives. Well, this is this is. Okay, this is simple. Let's suppose we have 7x to the fifth. We'll call that uh, p of x. What's p prime of x? Dylan? Well done. Cameron, what's p double prime of x? Um, 
would it be? Let's see. Uh, 105 x to the third? Uh, I don't think it's 105. Oh, okay. 35 times 2 is 70 times 2 is 140 x to the third. Oh, okay. Okay, good. What's P triple prime? Ivan. Uh -huh. um, P triple prime? Sure. What's the derivative of that? Sorry, I have a question. If you don't mind, why did you do one hundred? Why did you do thirty-five times two and not thirty-five times three? I didn't. I did thirty-five times four. Thirty-five times two oh, times yeah. two. Thirty-five times oh. two seventy times. I'm doing it without a count. I'm showing off my mathematical skills. I'm flexing my mathematical muscles here, okay? So like 140 times three, I did 14 times three and added a zero. 14 times three, I did it as 30 plus 12 is 42. So I know that that's 420 X squared. And I can just keep going. I can do P to the, uh, the fourth derivative of P. And eventually what's gonna happen? Zero. Beautiful. Thank you, Dylan. I started with a quintic, a fifth degree polynomial. Take the derivative, I end up with a quartic. Take the derivative of a quartic, I get a cubic. Cubic goes to quadratic, quadratic goes to linear, linear goes to constant, constant goes to zero. Polynomials, if you take the derivative long enough, you will eventually get to zero. That's all higher order derivatives are. Here's all the notation for them. Most of the time, we're going to use these first three. Okay, just keep adding a prime in there. And it gets to be a pain writing all those dash marks, so notice it eventually changes to a number. This is not y to the fourth. That's the fourth derivative of y. Okay. And occasionally, these other two columns will pop up, but it's the same thing over and over again taking the second derivative, the third derivative, the fourth derivative. You just continue doing that process over and over again. And again, if it's a polynomial, eventually it will go to zero. What if, uh, what if S of X is the sign? What's S prime of X? Anybody? Cos Cosine. And then S double prime of X? Negative sine x. Negative sine x. How about s triple prime of x? Negative cosine x. Good. Let's do one more. s to the four, uh, fourth derivative of s. With that just be uh, sine x? Yep. And now we've created a loop. So then we go through the process again. You've seen something like this. I hate to bring this up, but do you remember when you were dealing with I? Yeah, and then it becomes a repeating pattern. Something like a trig function would then, so we could actually figure out what is the 102nd derivative of S. I don't want to, but we could, because that pattern is repeating, as opposed to the polynomials, which eventually get down to zero. Okay, questions? I told you this wasn't a big deal. It's just doing what we've already been doing twice or three times or four times. However, I will mention this. If we go back a little bit to this puppy, I, 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 I hesitate to mention this, but I will. Can you imagine how nasty that's gonna get? Just let that sink in for a second. Eventually, we're gonna be doing this kind of stuff. Not yet though, we're not ready for it. Okay. Uh, tangent, trig function, did that. We are done. Beautiful.
Questions?